But now we're going to be able to get a chance to see the other half of EU for the day, which is going to be the following, and it'll be Obey versus Enix to close the day out. And I think that's another pretty anticipated matchup. Absolutely. I mean, Obey is the only team in Europe that we haven't seen quite yet. They're the only team that hasn't played a set so far in the summer split. And then the defending champions of the spring split. So you know that they're going to be working. I'm excited to watch what they can do. You know that a team like that is not going to just rest on their laurels and say, all right, you know, kick back and relax. We won the spring split. We don't got to worry about anything else. That's not their style. They're going to be, they're going to come out looking strong, I think. And it's really just coming down to when you're looking at the members of both of these teams, Obey hasn't had a roster shift or anything like that in particular since the Frezzy case. But I think that they've really found their meshing once they added a Mealzy to the team. That shot calling potential that he provides alongside of a jungler like Captain Twig, I think has just helped them have such a dominating presence. Not only that, but Mania, this is the Maniac meta right now in solo, right? The, the, the types of gods that are being played are all Maniac style of in your face, do whatever I want, when I want, specifically in the early game really favors Obey pretty heavily right now. And Enix have, they've managed to pick up a 2-0 victory for themselves on Thursday sure. in, in their set. But now the question is, are they going to be able to carry that momentum over into this matchup against Obey? And that's, that's really the biggest question. This is a big measuring stick for Enix because like you mentioned, they made a couple of roster changes, picking up Fails and Ducky. And this is a roster that has a ton of potential. I mean, their ceiling is incredibly high. But Obey is already starting to reach their potential, which could be even like Obey is, for my money, the best team in the world right now. And what better way to see exactly where you are than to play the best team? It also gives Xenix an opportunity early on in the split, after they've made these roster changes, to, you know, even if they get 2 0 here today, they can say, all right, well, you know, what went wrong? What do we need to work on? And then you've got easier matchups during the rest of the summer split, and then you wouldn't have to face Obey until potentially Val Valencia. So this is a good opportunity for Enix to not only maybe see where they are in total, but even if they were to take some L's today, understand what they need to do differently to take down Obey come DreamHack. Can't really go wrong with polishing up your gameplay, but two players in particular on both of these rosters that already have fairly polished gameplay is going to be that dual lane matchup of Adaraxia versus Fumballer. And I think for either side, these could pretty much be catalyst players for getting things going. Without a doubt. I mean, Adaraxia has d transcended his former level by building transcendence on the ROM basically all the time. But he, he's had a great, he had a great spring split. And a lot of that is due to the way that the rest of the team is playing around him. But he has definitely stepped up his level of play. Funball, you can say the same. I mean, ever since separating at the end of season three from Trix Tank, Funball has been, ha had this kind of more carry mentality. He's always had that swagger about him. He's always had that confidence. But now it's really starting to come through in his gameplay. He's looked good all of season four. And I'm really excited to watch this matchup. His ROM gameplay has been absolutely it lights out the entire time. His snipes, uh, phenomenal, beautiful. I mean, Marvels is probably impressed at this point by the way that Fumballer is able to maneuver around and position himself. And I, I really just like his hunter display because he does have that I'm going to hyper carry mentality about him, and he carries through with it. Without a doubt, and it's not only the ROM. Funball has a pretty wide god pool. He's not a, he's not afraid to pull out the Artemis or, you know, was one of the first players to really pull out Scotty consistently along with Emilito. So this is a guy that can play, play a lot of different casts of characters and also carry with basically every single one of them. It's 100% going to be probably one of the, I'd say one of my more anticipated matchups to view personally. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Enix matches up against Obey because I, I fully believe the Enix roster has a ton of potential and whether or not they can harness it is going to be the interesting factor. But before we can get into Obey versus Enix, we are going to be seeing Elevate versus the Poppies. And this is another really fun matchup simply because not only do the Poppies just have a massive fan base already, but I'd say that both of these teams are also just teams that a lot of people expect to kind of be able to be the split masters of the EU SPL. These are the, these are the two teams that I think a lot of top end teams are saying we need to make sure that we're preparing like they're a top end team because they both have talent to kind of upset you. Elevate more so established, of course, because they've got Jermaine, they've got Dardes, they've got Nulissa, these, these players that have been there, done that, and consistently taken splits. I mean, Elevate was the only team to find a split during the online phase up against Obey for the spring split. So you know that these guys have potential to make those upsets. 
The difference for Elevate is they need to understand that they need to learn how to beat the teams they should be beating 2-0. Our system really rewards teams that finds 2-0 victories by giving you that extra point. And if you're going to rise up the standings, you're going to qualify Valencia, you need to be taking those three points when, and when that opportunity presents itself. This is one of them for Elevate. They need to find this 2-0 if they want to get to Valencia. Their previous experience, like with the members already having that SBL factor underneath their belt and getting to know what it's like to play at the competitive level, I, I, would you say that that's kind of working against the Poppies and in favor of Elevate? I mean, the, the Poppies have been around the Challenger Cup for so long, and they've been one of those top-end Challenger Cup teams enough so that they're getting practice against SPL teams and scrims. And so it isn't as bad as say you know a team that's come out of absolute nowhere and all of a sudden they're in the spl and they're you know looking around like where are we who are these players we're playing against they've played these players before but not when it really counts P the poppies i think are one of those teams that could really surprise us even early on in their spl careers in the summer split but they need to be making sure that they're doing the things they need to do against the top end teams it's easy to dictate the pace against teams that you're better than but it's difficult to try and be like okay we're gonna have a deficit here just in player skill or in the drafting phase and we need to compensate with that on the other side of the map it's difficult to adjust on the fly like that especially whenever you're up against seasoned veterans that are doing the exact same thing to your roster it's really just about whether or not the poppies can move themselves up to that higher tier of gameplay that a lot of people just kind of expect to happen at the SPL level of gameplay and they're a roster that's pretty much notorious for aggression particularly I'm looking at one member Warchi he's been trying to play so aggressively in the dual lane for the poppies he loves picking cupid and just trying to go in get the dash off the easy heart bomb and then potentially drop his fields of love but uh, i'm not certain how well that's going to work out against somebody like jermaine or even just dartis dartis loves hanging around to try sure. and provide that support i mean jermaine is one of those guys that has been talked about so often in terms of not only is he one of the best hunters in europe but he's in the t conversation for best hunter in the world and that's odd to say that about a hunter that's con consistently in that you know, six seed spot, but that really speaks to how much respect that he gets around the European scene. Warchi definitely is going to have an opportunity to prove himself today. Not necessarily, you know, even if his team doesn't find a victory here, if Warchi has a good performance up against Jermaine, that could give him the confidence that he needs to go up against, you know, Emilito, Ataraxia, Funball, these guys that he'll be playing later on in the split that are also some of these, you know, incredible stars. I mean, some people do regard Jermaine as a top three hunter in EU, even though his team might not necessarily be regarded as a top three team. Sure. But... You also have to consider that there's other members on this on both lineups to keep in mind. And I think that Ojo Boom and Nulisa are two really important team members on both sides. Nulisa in particular, just because she has a fairly similar COD pool to Ojo Boom, and they're both excellent at playing this Vulcan. Very true. Both really prioritize the Vulcan. Lots of European mids seem to like the Vulcan. And whenever you get consistently destroyed by Pretty Prime when he plays it, I suppose that's probably part of it. But Ojo Boom for me has been very feast or famine for the poppies he's either one of the people carrying the game and you know all eyes are on him and he's having this phenomenal performance or he's be, he's, he's not bringing what he needs to bring it's consistent i would rather have a mid that is that is consistently doing what they need to be doing and then will occasionally sprinkle in a great game and maybe have a tough one here and there than this big kind of spread oh boom needs to kind of bring that together a little bit and just try and be a little bit more consistent that being said when he's on the guy is nuts. He absolutely <laughs> has great potential. I, I, it'll be really fun and exciting seeing how these two different play styles mesh up because I feel as though Nelissa is probably the more consistent factor like you yes. were just talking about. And oh, boom, whether or not he's going to pop off, we'll be able to find out right now as the casters take us into set number three. Elevate versus the Poppies should be an interesting one. I think that we've seen that Elevate is perhaps better than their seating may really let you think. However, with Fails leaving the roster, uh, has left a lot of questions in players' minds. Absolutely. Agro put it best when he talked about this team being the split team. Elevate, mm. you know, get, get a bunch of victories against all these good teams, but they can't close it out against the lesser experienced ones. This is going to be the test for Elevate in their first set. Oh, I'm sorry, their second set so far in the summer split against the Poppies. Yeah, let's take it to picks and bands to see where everybody's going to wind up with their compositions. The Poppies do have a couple of choices that they like to pick. The Cupid and the Vulcan were most notably mentioned here. So with the Poppies panning out, Fafnir 
Elevate will choose to ban out the ever popular Robin. So we'll see where everybody winds up after the second bans. Osiris, pretty standard, just meta ban. And the final first round ban will be a Sir Ket. A lot of aggressive early gods immediately off the table. Robin's one of these flex options that you don't necessarily want to deal with, whether it's the soul lane or the jungle roll. Osiris has been just so dominant ever since Maniac kind of brought it back yeah. to the table at the beginning of Season 4. Well, Terra will be selected here first for the poppies, and Elevate will go Bologna and Karninos, two very strong characters currently in the meta. We'll see how that one works out. You heard Agra really singing the praises of Jermaine. Mm. So giving a very good hunter, a very good hunter, is a very good look for the hunters. And there's that Vulcan. Oh, boom, will be the one playing it this time around. And Arlong Shen will likely be in the solo lane. Pretty good long range poke and setup thus far out of the Poppy's composition. You're having the meatballs, the javelin toss, mm -hmm. the walls collapsing on you from Poppy's so far. Whereas Elevate's more about in your face action thus far between this Bologna and Cabracken. And surprisingly enough, Cabracken, we haven't seen him being played in the jungle role recently at least sure but Kabrakin does a really good job against Vulcan specifically locking him down with the walls really strong stuff against a character like Vulcan the Cupid band out by Elevate love that they're going for the personal play on the side of the poppies they know that Warchi wants to bring out the little guy so they ban him out the nemesis are just kind of standard uh, and the Sun Wukong band next to the Ares band for the poppies interesting what do you think the thought process Maybe is there Maybe they've done their homework and they are expecting Bologna, Cabracken, and Sun Wukong here. Mm -hmm. They probably thought maybe it would have been Bologna Jungle, Cabracken support, sure. so therefore they're banning away Sun Wukong to get away more of these backline penetrators. But Thor is one of these gods that can easily dive the backline with his global and then hammer. And that's likely to be the jungle. Although we have seen Thor solo once upon a time, I think it's going to be the jungle here. And Susano! A character who I still think is very, very powerful. Ton of control here on this jungler. Uh, Going to be selected for the poppies in the last moment possible. Rom, the hunter of choice for the poppies as well. Elevate, however, they have one more selection. Their hunter's already chosen. It will be a mid lane, and it's going to be Isis. So we'll see Nulissa play the control mage this time around. Nulissa's kind of known for her Giannis and her Vulcan, and the Isis is sort of her third tier character. It's something that synergizes very well with Nika here in this role because of how aggressive he probably wants to be in the early game with this door. Isis is probably one of the best early game gods that mm -hmm. you can want out of your mid lane, especially once Purple Pot was a thing back in level one purchasable consumable slot but now without it it's still a good idea to do this option control the mid lane look for a potential invade and then shut down Dalo any opportunity you can get shutting down Dalo easier said than done this guy has done relatively well honestly I think Dalo has been my uh one of the more one of the players that I've enjoyed watching the most on this team, even going back historically. I just really like Dalo on this team. Absolutely, this jungler has made a pretty big impact in his short amount of time Oops. in the poppies. He's always been looking for these kind of plays and what other god would you want besides Susano making the plays despite yeah. the slight nerf being dealt to him over the past couple of patches, he still provides you this high mobility in the jungle, being able to initiate at the drop of a dime and do a lot of burst damage getting out Keep an eye on Arlong Shen. Not just because I like his dog, but because he's looking for the flank here. I'm um, actually just gonna not really go for the kills or the aggressive play. As he walks over the ward from Elevate, he gets spotted out, so just goes for the vision, or just goes for the experience, excuse me, and then TPs over to a short lane. Gonna miss out on some gold though, because no numbers is able to clear the way first, yep. so that way will enter the tower. But this time around, Poppies, they attempted to go for that speed buff and they're not going to find it because of how powerful the clear is between this Isis door. Yeah, I mean, Isis is one of the strongest uh, p uh, clears in the game and big damage on Dalo already. Had to use the beads. If Dalo doesn't pop beads, that's the first blow. Absolutely. Level 2, Thor Isis is probably the scariest 2v2s in mid jungle that you want to be dealing with mm -hmm. between the stun of the Isis, the wing gust, and then you got that hammer followed up by the Berserker Barrage at level 2, especially with the passive of Thor giving you amplified physical power yeah. that could have spelled first blood very easily yeah and you listen on this Isis though so much pressure Isis I, I she might have the best player in the game I think I think she does obviously competing there is to be Poseidon Anubis Ra I think Isis is probably a little bit safer to play than Anubis in the just, a, just a little bit <laughs> 
Damage on the left side, however, as Dardes finds control over Draco Marino. Not enough to kill, but enough to scare. Half HP on the support player, and he only has uh, one and two of the multi-pots and the health pots, respectively. Why do we see so many multi-pots on the side of, well, everyone these days? Well, Less mana, more multi. They're expecting aggression. You, whenever you're dealing against a Thor Isis, Dalo's gonna be relying on the mana from Ojo Boom to clear the wave anyway. So as long as he has that multi-pot, he could still take a little bit of extra damage from the wave or Nika and still stay relevant and not have to back at a timing that he's not familiar with. So that mm -hmm. way, for example, trying to back at the difference between the two minute mark versus the two and a half or maybe three minute mark, that's when you're only gonna have boots two versus boots right. three out of Nika. And, uh, one of the aspects I like about those two options is Ulyss and Thor clear the wave nice and easy is the fact that you can double up on it. In, and so that it allows you to fight while your health bar ticks up theoretically. You've got your multi pot and your health pot both contributing to HP five, so to speak, right? And you can sort of fight knowing that you're going to be building that HP up as Creed does right there. Pop at the health pot while he stays aggressive versus no numbers. Absolutely. You're getting 10 health per second out of the health pot, five health out of the multi pot. So essentially a total of 15 health per second is able yep. to start boxing against the opposition, but no numbers has the same mindset going for a multi pot. And with a death's toll and scourge, this Bologna will easily out sustain Creed every single opportunity making this matchup slightly more difficult than it needs to be for the Erlong Shen. Oh, boom, hits level five, and then thinks about going back, but he sees the wave, is here already. He realizes that he has to go ahead and actually help out and clear a little bit. Different starts for our mages here today, or not necessarily starts, but positions. Already boots two on the Isis, and she's gonna be building into that in a little bit, and you can see she is way up above the opposition. About 100 gold above the Vulcan here, who has backed and bought those boots too. So now about even, but Nulissa will be able to buy the boots three, the, f the full boots a little bit earlier, and that penetration is really important. But Ojo Boom, upon returning to the mid lane, he has a Sentry Ward available. So he'll be looking to play very defensively, trying to protect his own buffs because the difference of the speed buffs. Poppies, they try to invade the speed buff, were in unsuccessful in doing so. So they create this about one minute difference in speeds. And here's gonna come Nika with the first gank of the game. Creed's in trouble, Taunt is not good. The heal coming out in just a moment. And there it is, big money, but Nulissa shows up as well. Wing Gust is strong, Draco Marino controls three, but Nulissa through the wall gets the first blood for Elevate. A nice rotation from the Kabrakan. Nice. The Sunder making work out of that second kill as well. And I like the control there between Elevate getting those two kills, really trying to lock down Creed there. Now, had Terra's Blessing not proc the heal on Creed, he wouldn't have even gotten off the heal of his own ultimate. Right. It would have been a much cleaner gank, but the global presence out of the Terra's Blessing is going to be slightly more difficult to find kills onto Creed, especially once he gets a little bit more resilient with Mark of the Vanguard or Mystical Mail. But for now, it was a perfect gank out of Nika and team. And the nice rotation coming out of the mid lane really secured things. It was really well executed by Elevate. And they even find the follow-up kill as well onto the support player. So all things considered, looking kind of nice for Elevate. Starting off and going for the Oracle. So they'll have some additional vision on the left side of the map. Dardis's rotation was what contributed to that second important kill. Not normally known for sort of solo lane rotations. The more North American supports will go for these kinds of styles and rotations, but aggressive is in the nature out of Dardis, which is why he's playing the Cabragan, which is why he picked up the Sunder, which is why he <laughs> rotated in the solo lane looking for these plays. Exactly. I mean, when, you, when you're looking at Dardis and Jermaine, I mean, these guys are affectionately called the Bruise Brothers, right? And they don't have to be together in lane to just bring the pain, and that's exactly what they're able to do. Darda is able to just rotate. He's got the two assists so far, tank boots, and he's just trapping Warchi. Look, he's got nowhere to go but up. The Rob goes to the sky. Draco Marino taking damage as well. Warchi's going to come down, and the Terra is enough to send Elevate back to the lane. But that was a perfect ultimate by Dardes. But another perfect ultimate from Warchi. He 
prevents himself from getting into the boar form against Jermaine as he holds on to his purification beast. But with Nalissa having circle of protection, this goal fury attempt by Elevate. Zeke is going to go to the sky to protect everybody. Gets the kill accidentally, and the gold fury goes to the poppies. They're able to steal it. Dalo sends a tsunami and takes it away from Elevate. What a beautiful play out of the poppies jungler. Dalo making a huge play very early in the game, and if that goal fury goes in the way of Elevate, they can easily start controlling the pace of the game. That's, I mean, listen, I will ta tip my hat to Dalo. Good for you, bud. But that's 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 a that's just a drop by Elevate. You I would, have the Isis. I would agree. So, you have yeah. the Isis. But it's only a level one circle of protection. As much damage as Isis Ultimate does, that level one ultimate, before you get real magical power on, real penetration. Even still. It's very, it's an easy opportunity for Poppies to steal it. Compared to once Isis gets three points into the ultimate, once that Dynasty Plate Helmet gets complete, especially if Nelissa gets that Spear of Desolation, just absolutely melting any sort of objective. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. It is relatively early, but that's kind of where Isis flexes the most. She's an early game god. And, you know, I just, at, at the end of the day, yeah, she, it unfortunately was the mid lane dropping it. But either way, the Gold Fury down means that it's in direction of the poppies, and that will keep us tied for now instead of elevate catapulting to the lead that they thought they were going to be able to grab. But slight experience lead in their department, mostly on the form of the support. Dart is one level ahead of Draco Marina, which is not too shabby for Poppies, considering it is a Terra. Terra doesn't necessarily need that many levels mm -hmm. to stay relevant in the game. She's all about bringing the control be behind her kit, finding the roots or the stuns. And she's been able to find those. Uh, the roots have been really strong. The stuns, we just haven't seen them because they haven't really battered. We've seen one or two to really isolate players, but the roots have been strong. Now, the poppies haven't been able to get kills, but the three that Elevate have are not... Elevate has tried more than three times to find these kills, and Drake Marino has done a really good job of peeling for himself and his team. And everything had to go in like the perfect fashion for Elevate to find these kills because poppies, they were always grouped up, and they had the Terrace Blessing available to make those kills even more difficult. Kree surviving for quite a long time. If it wasn't for that rotation from Dardis earlier on, they would probably only have that one kill. No numbers down trying to take the fight. And Kree's gonna wind up on the good side of it. So we'll see the little back off from the Elevate Solo Lunar, who's actually gonna back all the way to base and likely teleport back. Still looking for a lot of these options between these junglers of what they really want to build into. More than likely will be the Yoden's Wrath for both. Nice little steroid pop by Dardes. He is immune to slows and roots whenever he uses that ability. Not only does he w run really quickly at you with his walrus hands trying to stun you, but try to root that guy. Not going to happen. Walrus hands? Yeah, his walrus hands. He's like a walrus whenever he's like... So, okay, so whenever you pop the one, that's Kabraken. <laughs> Think about this. You pop the one as Kabraken, you run forward, and you hold left click. Yeah, and you're... You don't stop moving fast anyway, and it just looks like you're a walrus, man. Have you ever seen a walrus, Anatoly? Okay. I just pretend I'm making walruses noises. <laughs> I think you as mean I'm charging. seal. Same thing. <laughs> it's Close not the enough. same thing at all, but I'll give it to you. Ten minutes in... And Elevate are tied up with the Poppies. Unfortunately for Elevate and their support Walrus, they did give up their Gold Fury to a Poppy Steel. It looks nothing like a Walrus. I'm not giving that one I'm to gonna you. I'm going to Google this after the match. <laughs> I, you, I know you will. Nick is going to go to the sky as everybody gets aggressive and winds up in Elevate's jungle, or excuse me, the Poppy's jungle. But big damage, spin to win. Nulissa and the solo lane. Two players dead already. Draco Marino's next. No numbers. He's the opposite. He's got a two and he's got a three in his kill column and assist, respectively. And a big old goose egg where the enemy wants the numbers to be. He hasn't died yet. In fact, nobody on his squad has died yet. The team fight, the jungle, and
and the portal demon all go to the red team. Wrong place at the wrong time. Warshi baiting out the ultimate out of Jermaine, though. Red buff going in the favor of Elevate Hunter. But going back into that team fight, that was just great presence of mind from everybody out of Elevate. They utilized their global presence out of Thor so beautifully. And the control that they have between the Tectonic Rift, Anvil of Dawn, the stun silence out of Nalissa, the control that Dardus brings, whether or not he's stunning you or he's just right. making you move in a way you don't want to with his tremors. Elevate just lock poppies in wherever they want. Yeah, it's it's, it's really tough for the poppies to deal with it. Warchi, look how careful he is against your main here. He doesn't want to walk too far up, doesn't want to get caught out of position, because he knows, look at this gang squad. Elevator just grouped up in 11 minutes, ready to fight anyone that shows up, and they're just gonna hard body the Gold Fury. If Poppies really want to do this, they're gonna have to full commit, and they just, whether or not they know, they just can't do it. Remember, long range poke versus short range. This Thor is going to be the key factor. Double for Creed. He's gone. Jermaine puts lucky number seven on the board here. There's the combo on the Dalo. Nika's looking a lot better in this game than he did earlier. Absolutely. Taking advantage of all the relics being down from Poppies without the purification beads for Dalo. Once he gets stunned once, all that burst damage from Nika is going to be truly in effect. Trying to buy a little bit of time is Warchi. He misses the second and the third one. Going to avoid out that stun, but the Ooh. Berserk. Ooh, I thought he was going to commit with that Berserker Barrage. If the double tap finds it then one more basic gets the kill but unfortunately for nika unable to really get that one eight to zip the poppies got lucky and took the first gold fury but the second one goes to elevate as they planned and they'll be up about 3500 because of that great play no numbers here in the soul lane on the bologna has been looking very strong top of the player damage but he's a solo laner it's so he damage. gets some fake damage as well but when it comes, oh, there's the player damage. I was reading the wrong thing. And it's no surprise uh, to me that, that Nika's top of the player damage. That's, so I was actually looking at it going, why is it Nika top player damage? Because I can't read. He is top player damage, and that makes sense. He's been able to really control these team fights. Now, I like when he went up for gold fury number one. Unfortunately, uh, we saw Dalo actually steal it away. But he goes up in the ultimate to play sort of satellite and see who's around, what's happening. By the time he communicates that everybody's here, unfortunately, Gold Fury goes south for him and his team. But he's been able to land these combos very, very strongly. At first, when we saw him, I was questioning the move to jungle and here on Elevate. I like it. He's doing very well today. Very nice transition thus far out of the multi-rolled player out of Nika. Beats whether or not he's Hunter, Solo, Jungle. He's always very confident in his own abilities along with his team to be able to follow up. And Elevate is just a team that has very high highs, but then sometimes they've been known to have very low lows. Right. And that's, you know, Elevate has to find a new identity. Uh, Fails was a very big part of this team for them. And he's moved on to arguably bigger and better things and it's up to elevate to make that argument that he has not moved on to bigger and better things but simply different things and if nika keeps playing like he does like he has been today i think they can make that argument nika is a is a large question mark to a lot of players or a lot of people he sort of proved himself a little bit in the solo lane but not all the way he didn't really do much in the hunter role now here he is in the jungle which is his preferred role Will it work out is a different question. Right now, the answer is yes. He's been involved in seven out of the eight kills out of Elevate. He's been making his impact surely felt by the poppies. Yep. With this Yoden's Wrath finished, now working on what looks to be a shifter shield, he's going to have a little bit even more physical power to really burst out the opposition, whether it's the double tap or that Berserker Barrage. Interesting to not see him go the, the Hydras. I know the Yotans has really come back into prominence. Uh, Hydras, why is it gone? So there's a, if you don't want to commit to the in hand, let's say you just want to poke from a distance, you're going to stun, hammer away, or hammer, but you're not going to teleport to it. So are you really getting the benefit of Hydras if you're not committing to an in hand in between every ability? That's the truth. But right now he's going to commit to the team fight on the left hand side. Warchi trapped, and there's the kill, the hit on the Draco Marino. The trouble for Dalo as he shows up. Jermaine half HP has to ages. There's the shot from Oho Boom over the wall. Not going to find a target, but Oho Boom gets boomed himself. 
himself. Darnes on the good side. One kill for the support. And now everybody on Elevate has at least one kill. And nobody on Elevate has at least one death. Warchi needs to be very careful, but Dalo's trying to find the pull here. Oh. But he's going to be the one pulled back into the grave. Darnes controls him completely from behind. Alyssa making the stun happen. Nice play. Nice play. I. Uh, there's something about good Isis play that just I love watching a strong Isis player. Spirit balls and, and, and silences are just, that's what I want to watch. So cheeky, Nalissa wrapping around behind the purple buff, recognizing that the rest of our team was in a good spot anyway. They have a one player advantage with the Vulcan player being dead. Why not take this opportunity to wrap around the flank side? And whether or not they find a kill there, they would have at least forced Poppies to retreat from that tier one tower. Sure, yeah, absolutely need to, need to make them retreat just a little bit. Almost 17 minutes in here, folks, and a really strong lead for Elevate. They're off about what is that, 7,000 gold? Yeesh. At 16 and a half. Shutting out the poppies currently. Draco Marino in some trouble. Rally over here says no numbers and the support. Gonna try and find safety in the solo lane. Nika misses the ultimate completely, but Nulissa doesn't miss hers. The ultimate's down on the ground. Nulissa gets the kill off of a different ability. And the ultimate will pop and heal everybody up on Team Elevate. Dalo's the target now, totally. No numbers looking for the chase. Won't continue, but Ocha Elevate Boom. get number 12. Ocha Boom needs to be very careful with Dardis right around the corner. The ultimate is available for this cup bracket, locking him into place. And thus far, out of poppies, there's no phantom being committed quite yet. Maybe level 12 once Draco Marino hits that power spike. You that could be an option. Is that important? I guess the, whenever you are a Vulcan player and a Zeus, like a lot of these gods can't, none of these gods can get out of the ultimate at all. Yeah, I, I at the end of the day, I mean, you're able to like fight through Darnes' yeah. ultimate. You can, you can basically take out some of the stones. Right. Granted, you have to communicate that very quickly as well because there are five of them, so you have to hit, be hitting the same exact stone that you want the players to get out of. Oh, communication on the poppies. Nobody knew where anybody was. They assumed they were going for the Gold Fury. They went for the Gold Fury a little bit late, or the uh, Poppies went uh, and showed up a little bit. Just wrong time, man. Elevate snatched the Gold Fury right under the nose of the Poppies and just ex they extend their lead to 9,000. They have a decent 8, amount of 000. vision as well, surprisingly enough, to be able to not spot that out correctly. But either way, Elevate still extending their lead quite heavily here, heading into the almost 19 minute mark, over 13,000 experience. Demon. Portal Demon. The Poppies, this one's just getting out of control, man. Uh, at some points, you know, you can say, all right, we got this late game team in the, uh, the Vulcan and the Rom, but at some point, too much is too much. This is quickly turning into a downward spiral. Absolutely, everybody on Poppies is either two or three levels behind their counterpart out of Elevate, and Elevate are just unrelenting. Nice pull They're by Dalo, grouped. but he's too far behind. Jermaine just smacks him in the mouth for coming up front. Here's going to be trouble for the support as well. Meanwhile, D Jermaine takes care of Warchi on the left-hand side. Draco Marino about 20%. Make that 10. Make that 0. 5 and 7 for Nulissa. And that's a 19-minute surrender. I got to agree. 16 to nothing. Gotta elevate. Agree. Out of their mind was their performance. This is the kind of elevate that we're expecting to see start strong in the summer split. And you know what? At the same time, I want to say this is not the poppies that we're expecting to see here in the summer split at all. The poppies, I think, we expected to see. There, there are still a lot of questions, and by no means do I expect them to come into the SPL and be top of the crop. But they're the. I expected a little bit more than that. Are we able to just chalk that as a bad one out? Yeah, we could basically sweep this under the rug. It's only the first week. This is the yeah. first game of the summer split for, for the Poppies. You know, they're trying to make their impact felt here. And against Elevate, they need to be questioning themselves in game two for picks and bans. They need to make a few necessary adjustments. Let's head